I'm Justin Dane, and here's your rundown of this week's news. Monday, Texas Tribune Managing Editor Ross Ramsey sat down with Jack Pratt, the chairman of the Texas Gaming Association. Pratt is hoping to convince Texas lawmakers to let voters decide whether to allow casinos in the state. He says casinos could bring more than $1.2 billion into the state treasury every year. Our proposal <coughs> under House Short Resolution 112 would call for eight integrated large destination resort casinos. Voters elected 30 new Republicans to the House last November. Those freshmen promised their constituents they'd cut the fat out of government. As the House tackles the budget, the freshman class is showing some clout. I'm not uh, supportive of tapping the rainy day fund at this stage in the session for the next biennium. And I, I feel like it would be a mistake to spend all that money now when we don't know what the future holds. And that's not, it wasn't intended to be used for future budgets. It was intended to be used uh, for exactly what we're using it for this week, uh, which is what has the support across the board, and that's plugging the shortfall in the current biennium. Hundreds of people rallied at the state capitol in hopes of convincing lawmakers to pass SGR 33 and HGR 111. Those bills would allow a statewide vote on putting slot machines at dog and horse racetracks, as well as federally recognized Indian reservations, but would stop short of allowing casinos in the state. Texas singer Lyle Lovett, who also raises horses, was there to show his support. Our state is, is no longer competitive uh, uh, with, with our surrounding states uh, in, in terms of the, uh, the money we can generate here. Texas Tribune CEO and Editor-in-Chief Evan Smith interviewed State Rep. Sinfronia Thompson. She argues that state funding cuts to public education now will cost taxpayers more money further down the road. To be able to assist those students who are behind academically because a lot of them are late bloomers, not necessarily dumb children or kids who may not have learned, but a little late bloomers and psychologically they have not matured to a level that they can be able to grasp the educational data that was presented to them. <coughs> now the question comes, do you want to pay for it on the front end where it's cheap for society to do that or would you like to pay it on the back end in the prisons where we started getting GEDs at $16,000 at a time pop. And the big topic of the week, the state budget. Lawmakers on the House floor started a debate on a number of budget bills on Thursday and are expected to go into the weekend. Democrats tried to frame the debate as a matter of prioritizing education and health, while Republicans argue that making cuts and holding the line on state taxes and government growth are what the voters sent them here to do. I think it's been pretty clear that we have to live within our means as a state. We can't print money like the federal government can. Uh, you can't sustain uh, the, love, the levels of spending that we got last session uh, by using your savings. What you saw today uh, were my colleagues, my Democratic colleagues, trying to prioritize the quality of our education, trying to prioritize keeping nursing homes open. I believe voters want us to pass a budget that holds these two items supreme to all others. I'm Justin Dane and that's your rundown.